Welcome back to San Diego People. I'm Sandra Moss. Using personal experience is often an effective way to help others. Michelle DeForest is a counselor at the McAllister Institute, and she uses her past experience with addiction to help those on the road to recovery. And she's with me today, along with Jean McAllister, the CEO of the Institute, to, to share her story and tell us all about what she does. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You uh, have uh, been uh, uh, so over seven and a half years in recovery, in recovery as they yes, say and now you are a counselor how about that how about that <laughs> But tell us your story. How, um, wh what, um, how did all this come to be? Um, I came from a long line of personal abuse, a lot of familial abuse, and um, I started drinking at a very early age, and it was just the gateway to other drugs that just progressed, abusive relationships, and the pattern was just set. And um, it progressed for a very long time. How old were you when you started drinking? Um, I was a little kid of parties that would take the sip off the, the adults, so about three years old is when my addiction was awakened. I was that little kid that took that sip off of off that can and said mmm good and and you know it's just started from there you were hooked what um what was the point well first of all what kind of trouble did you get into over um, the years two DUIs I my children were born my youngest children were twins and they were born pause talks I had what used, does that mean they were born under the influence of alcohol and meth my older daughters had had a little bit of when I was pregnant, and then by the time my twins, I was pregnant with my twins, I was homeless, I was prostituting, I was everything that the addict is, I was, and I was unable to stop. I was that one that even being pregnant wasn't able to stop. My addiction had that much of a grip on me. So you abused alcohol, methamphetamine, you had four children, you were homeless, and two, yes. all, two DUIs. Yes. What that... I just don't even know that your lowest point that must have been it I, I would you would think so but um, I was able to stay sober for three years after I got my twins back after they were because they obviously didn't come home from the hospital with me um, and then I went back out my addiction was more powerful I didn't necessarily have the tools needed to remain sober and so on July 15th 2010 my twins were taken from me again by CPS gratefully so um, and at that point my initial thought was I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight for them and then I was literally on my knees praying for death trying to kill myself and um, something changed uh, uh, one of those defining moments happened and I called my two older daughters and said mom's coming home and then two, two weeks later I entered Kiva and Kiva is the place where you are now a yes. counselor at the McAllister Institute explain what that is Kiva is a residential program for women and children. You don't necessarily have to have children to be a resident there. Um, we offer all services to introduce and educate these, these women who are struggling with their own addictions. Some come from jail, some are CWS involved, some have hit their lowest points. And you, um were there for how long before you got sober? I stayed there from t October 2010 into March of 2011, and I've been clean since. Wow, congratulations, seven and a half years. Yes. That is amazing. You must be so proud of her, and now she's counseling other women with their children in this center that saved her life. Um, I'm very proud and very humbled, but also very touched, you know, because this is a story that we hear often. And um, it, you would think that after so many years that you would be used to it and hardened, but you get softer. And, and I really care a lot about you, Michelle, and, and your story. You know, it touched my heart. Oh boy. Yeah, it's a moment. It's so emotional and it's so important. You're, so your children, are they back in your life? Yes, they are. My children are back in my life. Um, we are very close knit. We are very much entwined. Um, I'm also a grandmother now and my grandson is going to be five in August and he's never seen me loaded. He's never seen me with a drink in my mouth. He's never seen me with a cigarette. When my kids now can dr pick up my drink after me without asking, they, they have faith if I go somewhere that I'm coming home. For the, you know, they're not getting those phone calls in the middle of the night that mom's in jail, mom's in the hospital, beaten, raped. She is coming home as long as the powers that be allow for that. It's not going to be because she's loaded today. And not only that, Michelle, you are changing the lives of other addicts at this Kiva 
center within the McAllister Institute. Tell me about that. How powerful is that for you? It is very powerful. My always my goal is when I go to work is to hopefully make the difference one for one. If I can make the difference for just one, if I could just plant that seed, I have done my job. They must really listen to you because your story is harrowing. It's just remarkable that you're it's a miracle that you're alive it is <laughs> and it's such a success story as well is it hard for you to deal with these women or is it is it is emotionally it is the most rewarding work I could imagine doing anything else it is it's walking into work I have the pleasure of seeing these ladies faces those moments when those light bulbs come on and you know you're making a difference because something's clicked for these ladies some have been here multiple times and it's is just to be a part of that and to hopefully have that seed and and Jean when you have a counselor like Michelle someone who has um, walked the walk and is now on the bright side um, the, the people the women in this center must really respect her it must be more meaningful to somebody hearing it from her oh absolutely it's kind of like me you know I'm real impressed uh, after all these years and and these women come in so broken and we just had a graduation last Saturday and we graduated 60 women who were back in school back with their families back with their children um, and they all give Michelle and the other counselors some applause and and uh, are very thankful to them for the work that they do I am so proud to have them on my team you know that they can give back to these women and uh, Women come in like little broken flowers, and they, as they stay in the program, they open up, and they're, they're beautiful, beautiful flowers. So, What is the typical, like, um, how long does it take for somebody, once they enter the center, to, to, to get on that um, kind of, if you will, treadmill of, of good, even keel sobriety? It's different for every woman, because everybody comes in at a different level. level. Some have been introduced to recovery before. Some have had some length of clean time before. So there's, like, no set pattern. All we could do every day is do what we do, educate, be a role model, and hopefully pl plant that seed in and be the changing difference for these ladies. Is it still a struggle for you to stay sober even today? It's been seven and a half years. That seems like a very long time. 61 years for Jean <laughs> for crying out loud. I know, amazing, loud. right? <laughs> but is it, is it something you think about every day still? No, it's not. Um, for myself, I practice an active program of recovery. I make sure I have a sponsor. I have a support group. Um, my kids have been through my addiction with me, so they've been through my recovery with me as well. Um, I can talk to them. I have a best friend that is my go-to. Um, when I have those thoughts, I now have the tools and the coping mechanisms that kick into play. And if I'm struggling a little bit harder, I reach out a little bit quicker. What would you ha say to people who are watching and listening to your story who, you know, maybe their story isn't as dramatic as yours is, but they are struggling and their lives could be a lot better if not for the substance abuse or alcohol abuse. What is your message? Get help. You're not alone. Get help. We, we can be successes. We can live healthy lives. Reach out. Jean gave her number, 442-0277, corporate. Get the information you need to do what you need to do to live a healthy life. We will have all of that information on the KUSI website. Michelle, thank you so much for sharing your thank story. You You're me. such an inspiration, and um, I wish you well on your path to sobriety. Thank you. And Jean McAllister, great to see you as always. Thanks so much. Thank you for having us. And that is going to do it for this edition of San Diego People. Be sure and join us tonight for the KUSI News at 6, 10, and 11.